it is 12 minutes oops, oops, oops sorry 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 guys it is 12 minutes after the hour of four and today on checked in we've got Taryn Carolus with us in studio good afternoon Taryn hi a very good afternoon to all our listeners awesome nice to have you here Taryn is there perhaps a shout out that you want to send to any of our listeners out there anybody in particular well, no one in particular. I'm quite new to this. <laughs> so I'd like to say hi to everybody that's listening to the station right now. And thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Nice to, nice to, really nice to have you here. Once again, welcome. Um, and today you're going to share a little bit of your story with us. Um, so tell us a little bit more about Taryn. Well, Taryn is a very short person. <laughs> A lot of people who get to see me for the first time is like, OMG, I did not know you are so short. But what can I say, dynamite comes in small packages. Well, besides that, I am a singer, songwriter, and rapper from Port Elizabeth of Friendly City. And I am proud to say that with my every being. Um, I've been in the game since 2010, um, so it's been quite a long time. So, yeah, and besides that, I love children, I love fashion. I definitely would like to see myself in business as well one day. Awesome. So I'm definitely embarking on new things every single day. Awesome. Uh, I, we see here from your bio that was also posted to our Facebook page that you you were part of the school choir at some stage or the other at Parkside Primary. Tell us a little bit about how that inspired your journey. Definitely. You know, Parkside Primary definitely had some famous people as well coming from there. Louis mm. Sobala. Wow. He was also at Parkside Primary. And he also got taught by Mrs. Thomas. She was our chore choir teacher at the time. Well, um, well yeah. So basically, um, you know, you got your sopranos. And I can't quite remember all the other terminology. But that was the only kind of formal training I had before singing. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and, and, and so what drove this passion for you to pursue a career in music? You know, everybody says, there's a, there's a special saying that says, you know, there's things, certain things God has placed in you, you know? Yes. And they always say you need to follow your passion, and the one thing that you're passionate about is the one thing that will end be the thing for you. Mm, yes. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly, but I guess it's just like music has always been a part of my family, and I've always done it through dancing, singing. I think the rap thing just came in 2020 because I was, mm. you know, when you're working a amongst artists certain things just tends to rub off yes so yes. for me rapping wasn't something i chose it kind of chose me awesome. but as for singing it's something i've done throughout and because of that it made me want to choose a career in music because i just i can't see myself doing the one thing that i know i can do good <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's amazing that's amazing I, I i love it when you say that you need to pursue your purpose in life and that's exactly what you're doing Tell me, um, I see also that you were involved with Imibala Music Festival, uh, it says in Joburg, Cape Town, and Port Elizabeth. Tell us a little bit more about the Imibala Music Festival. Wow, Imibala, there's so much to say. Um, Imibala is basically a platform created for artists that's up and coming, people like myself who doesn't necessarily have a showcase to, to show their talents, especially in the Eastern Cape. You don't get a lot of opportunity showcasing talent. Yeah. I mean, artists. So I've been since day one, since the first Emmy Bala Festival, I've been around. And every year they have different artists performing on the lineup. But I've had the opportunity to be sticking my spot. <laughs> 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 so this last year, I happened to travel to Johannesburg for the first time for wow. Emmy Bala. So that was like an amazing experience for me. Mm. Um, just being able to travel to Joburg and knowing that it's through something that I love. Yeah. really blew my mind because you know your talent and your purpose will make way and, and room for you to places where you never thought you can go yourself yes yes wow that's so inspirational that's so inspirational and you you mentioned early on that you now uh, in 2020 started to look at uh, rap and i know for a female artist it might be challenging tell us some of the challenges as a female rap artist Okay, well, speaking on the correction, the whole rap thing came 2020, 12, um, oh, 2020. Okay. I think that was just like beginning of high school, end of high school situation. Um, well, like I said, 
at the time I was just going to be like a female singer for the group. I was a part of Revolution 03. At the time I was with Raymo G and then a guy called Elf the Realist, which most of you know it's Irvin. <laughs> Um, but that's where I started out first, and then after we split as a group, um, I didn't do any music for two years. I was just working a normal nine to five, and then I realized, hey, like, I actually miss doing what I love. That's when I ended up leaving my nine to five job for a competition that took place in Cape Town. It was mm. called Starstruck Voice and Rap, Rap Search at the time. Yeah, and that is when. I stayed in Cape Town for six months. I had to quit my job I had in PE because I was doing so well in the competition. Mm. And I ended up being in the top five. Wow. But <laughs> situation happened and I decided, you know what? Cape Town just wasn't for me. Yeah. It was just a huge mind opening to what actually happens in the music industry. Yeah. And right then and there I decided as a female artist in the music industry, it's not just about being an artist, you also got to be a business person at the yes. same time. Because wow. people are trying to cut your deals, trying to cut you short, and I just knew, you know what, I know that I want to be an artist, <laughs> but I don't want to be that bad. You know, because there's certain things people mm. will offer you and you just know that it's so degrading that it's not exactly what my truth stands for, what my brand stands for, what wow. I want my listeners to, you know, be knowing about. And especially even if I did decide to do the wrong thing, eventually some things do come out to light. And yeah. I just don't want people to, how can I say? I just don't want certain things to be out there that I kind of show off to be in vain, you know? Yeah. I want my reflection of my hard work, my character throughout my music to be inspiration to everybody. Even from the, you said, I asked you earlier where you're from and you said the hood. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what's the hood? <laughs> you know, and, and that's just another way for like the northern areas or the suburbs. But I'm from the hood too, <laughs> whether mm. you know it or not. And it's just to show that you can't judge a book from its cover. Yes. But from a very young age, I've told myself, my circumstances will not be an excuse to, for me to not get where I want to be. Awesome. Um, I just want to hashtag that quickly. Your circumstances may not be or withhold you from where you want to be. Um, you spoke about two years uh, gap from music. Um, what really inside of you, what was that thing that that really made you pursue music again after two years? Because there might be artists out there that have given up on their dream since something must have happened or might have happened and then they've given up on that dream. So maybe to our listeners out there, what is that one thing that stood out for you in that two years that really drove you to fulfill your purpose? Okay, let's put it this way. You know, a lot of people say I've got fans mm. and I don't know if I should call them fans or not fans, but what happened was I went through a stage where it was like, I need to hustle for where I need to be. And a lot of my funding needs to be funded into music. Yeah. So it's like a 50-50. It's like I'm moving forward, but I'm also not sure at the same time where this is going to take me. Mm. And I knew that I needed a job desperately. So that was <laughs> obviously like my main income besides the music. Yeah. Um, so funny enough, while at my job, I would normally bump into people that knows I do music. Mm. And I don't want to, I don't know if you know Gino Lee, but yeah. So his, his, his mom is very nice and so is his dad. So his mom would often be one of the customers who like comes in the store and then she would be asking me like, hey, how are you doing? How's the music? And it was people like her that, mm. I mean, like if she's asking me, <laughs> then yes. definitely, you know, yes. you got something going on. And that just reminded me that they see something in me that I didn't see at the time even at my lowest point and that that made me realize that I needed to pick myself up start go way back from where I left it and take it and just carry on and pursue what makes me happy at the end of the day so ever since then I've never looked back I did what I needed to do and yeah I am awesome you said earlier on that dynamite comes in small packages and we can def um, yeah tell us a little bit about your life of faith how's how's that been well, my music, anything that I do cannot go without faith, God, or I don't know what it means to other people out there, but faith is the main driving force behind everything and anything that I do. Because 
I know there were times where it's like I was so down and out, but I promise you, they can be like a Bible verse or thing. I, I would literally, I'm one of those people <laughs> that I have talks to myself. Yeah. And it kind of <laughs> helps because it's like, two, it's like two people in your mind. The one is like being all like, I just want to be down, broke. And the other one is like, no, that is not the way God wants you to act or how mm. he wants you to deal the situation with. Yeah. So for me, faith is everything because even if, I have no one to talk to, I have no friends, I've got no family. God is the one thing that really motivates me like through it all. After all, He says that I know your worries and I know your case. You don't need to remind me of them. I am mindful of you. So therefore, I will make a way and what's impossible to you right now will be made possible in time. Wow. Reminds me of that old uh, hymn that uh, we sing. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus and take, take, all, take all your burdens and your cares to him. So that's that's really been inspiring um, That you actually you know a lot of times people have moved so far into the secular world and Because there's such a big demand for music and rap and all these kind of things You need to be a certain way you need to look a certain way and They've completely neglected the fact that without God nothing is possible and they've just moved forward and uh, become a brand on its own. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, um, and and, and what, what is your input on that? What do you think of that? Okay, so I'm going to take a trip down movie lanes. Let me explain this to you guys. You know when you watch those movies and you have these small towns and the only thing that small town know is a church on a Sunday or like prayer during the week mm. and they have their own little routine. Yeah. So if you're from a small town, that is what people in the community is known for. Yeah. But what happens when you take one or two people out of that small town and mm. you put them into the big pond or the real world? Mm. That, that people is gonna come back and say, but hey, we need to go, you know, we need to go <laughs> exploring. And I think that is exactly what happens when you are Christian, when you are a woman or man of faith, and you are the secular industry. Because you are raised in a home where it's faith-based, yeah. where you have Christ in your life, but you're not mm. necessarily taught to follow an industry like this. Yeah. But what many are missing, there's nothing wrong with mm. the industry. It is the people that is in the industry. Yes. And it's about you stepping into that mm. and bringing the Christ-like mind into that industry. Yeah. Still yeah. taking, you know, you got to take territory and claim it and say, you know what, I might be a child of God coming into this territory, but I'm claiming it right now and yeah. it's all mine. Yes, wow, that's that's fantastic. That, that's amazing. Okay, uh, another quick question. Um, rap or, or, you know, what do they, they call it nowadays? Uh, is this uh, trap music? It's yeah. a, a different kind of trap. Have you have you have you moved into that um, in any way, shape, or form? Well, with rap, okay, with music in general, I like to explore. Sorry, I don't like to like stick to one specific genre. I do find that trap music is like very hype. It's always mm. keeping you on a hype. It's on a beat. Yeah. With with rap, it's rap for me is like Eminem. You've got to listen <laughs> to that guy. You know, he's got lyrics Truth. in his bar. He's he's giving you a story. You know, he's making you think deeper than just the lyrics. You know, whereas in trap, a lot of people just write things and that it's just on the beat. You, it just keeps yeah. you on a hype. So for me, it's like with my music specifically, um, I could write about things that's or like but pertaining to life relevant, or what is yeah. it's relevant to life or it could be something that's not even relevant but just something that my listeners or audience will actually yeah. enjoy at the end of the day okay awesome so you're a versatile artist which is important which is important in this day and age because things have evolved and evolved and you have to keep up with the times have you partnered with any other artists or are you planning to partner with any other artists in the future well i on a regular basis, I interact with artists, you know, we always like switching ideas, hey, how are you doing, um, you know, in being that encouragement, but definitely in the future, I will love to see doing a collab with two, some of our artists, whether it's local, international, God willing, we don't mm. know what that looks forward like, but yeah, definitely. Okay, I see, I see another interest of yours is fashion, um, can you tell us a little bit about that? 
you know, growing up, because I'm so short, I've always wanted to be a model, you know, but unfortunately, it just didn't, you know, yeah. God didn't place me in that department with the legs. <laughs> but I think with fashion, um, uh, I've always wanted to, like, like I said, embark in, in modeling and that kind of thing, but the music took more off than the modeling, so I didn't quite go that way. But I recently got an opportunity to like work with brands awesome. and promote them at the same time while being a slash model promoter brand. So awesome. it, it all works in my favor to like what I actually wanted to do. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's really fantastic. I see uh, that you also mentioned that you are the voice for the voiceless. So you advocate for, for people that cannot speak for themselves. Tell us a little bit, just a little bit about that. Awesome. Well, I recently started out with the YouTube vlog. Um, well, it's quite fresh, it's quite new. It's not a lot of content on there yet, but definitely this year I'll be posting more content. So it's basically just about, you know, I don't know if you know the woman Sarah Jakes Roberts. Yeah. Gosh, that woman is so inspiring and now oh, she's <laughs> phenomenal in, you know, in her own ways. And I just feel like there are probably so many Sarah Jakes out there, yeah. but they just don't know it yet. Mm. And with the whole content of me having to be the voice for the voices, I don't need to be Sarah Jakes, but I'm Sarah Jakes in my own way, yes. you know. I feel like sometimes you, you get a talk with the person, but they won't be verbal about it. We'll be putting on a camera and be like, I'm going to take myself today and putting it yeah. out there. Because we are so conscious about what other people might think about it. Mm. But then I just realized, you know what? I know that I could be of help or of good inspiration to someone out there. Yes. So, all it matters to me is that if I can just touch one or two people, that's fine. Awesome. I don't really care for the 99 pence in, but I actually do care, but I'm just saying, you know, mm. it's about the motive, the drive behind what you're doing. Mm. And at the end, people will see that you, you put heart and you put passion, you put character into that, and that is what they're going to love about you. Wow. Wow. It's about the motive and the drive behind the intention. I'll hashtag that too. Um, yeah, so um, being from a small town, like you mentioned earlier, from Port Elizabeth and exploring Johannesburg and Cape Town, how is the music industry like in Port Elizabeth, in Nelson Mandela Bay? This is just from your perspective. You know, I'm a nice person, but sometimes I can be very savage when it comes to my comments. <laughs> but it's just, you know, me being honest. You know, when I've been to Cape Town, when I went to Joburg, you know, PE is like a snail. Like, you ever see how slow a snail moves? It's like, <laughs> it's like on its own vibe, you know. It doesn't care about the time, the place. It just does its own thing. And, and you know what I see PE as? If you really want to just, like, practice what you're good at, this is a mm. good practice for your place. But if you're thinking about going to Cape Town in Joburg, you got to know what you're doing when you're going yeah. there. Because there is people, you know what? You know, in PE, we're not quite surrounded so much between other artists. So you don't you don't get to see on a daily basis the drive and what yeah. it takes you to be at that level of performing. There's mm. a quote that says, you're only as good as your last performance. Yeah. So that means that whenever you put yourself on the stage and whenever you put yourself out there, you've got to make sure it is your best at all yes. times. You mm. never know who's watching, so... Mm. Yeah, just put your best foot forward. And perhaps just a follow-up question on that. What do you think can be done to promote the music industry in Port Elizabeth? Wow, um, that is quite an... In well, it's, not, it's a common question, but it's also... There's very really many different aspects to that, you know. Mm. First of all, arts and culture and PE needs to get done properly, yeah. number one. I think you always have entertainers. I think everybody's an entertainer, you know. So such mm. thing as you're not talented or you, you can't do A, B, and C. I think we're all pretty much creative, you know. It's about having to appreciate our artists, point number one. Yeah. Giving them a platform. Yes. And then paying them for their work. Yeah. First of all, studio time, paying these producers, they ain't cheap because trust me, even those guys are like, no, we're not charging you 150 rand for recording. Nope. <laughs> We're putting their price sky high because at the end of the day, they've got family to feed, you know, yeah. and and we also got our own thing going. So I feel like if the and the thing is, we've got to stop this whole thing aiming our favoritism. First of all, mm. you know, if you look at America, they might have their beef, their beef and their little politics, just like every other small little thing. But if you dope and you see that person got passion and they good at what they do that it's like your friend has a business go ahead and support it yes like 
that person might just be your breakthrough and you're just mm. holding down your own blessing. Yeah. So we've really got to get the whole idea of what it means to be in the arts and culture industry mm. and first revive that right here in PE before we can actually take it to the rest of the world. Awesome. Wow. I, I, I hope there, there are people out there that are listening. Um, we really need to start supporting local talent and we've got amazing producers. We've got amazing, even right here at Agape, there's an amazing studio. <laughs> so uh, please feel free to touch base if you do want to make use of that. So yeah, Terran, it's been it's been amazing. I mean, uh, 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 you you're really talented, and, and and we wish you all the best with with what you have going there. Um, there are a lot of young people that also listen to this radio station, and. Um, what would you say to them if they were sitting here right now? What would you say to them? If you were sitting right here right now or you listen to the station, and if you're any young person, boy or girl, it doesn't really matter. Um, I was like you like a few years ago, listening to maybe Garth Vader on Bay FM or the some mm. person on TV. Well, you never know. You got your own little role model, your King Kardashians. I don't know what y'all think a role model is to you. But you've got to look at your life and ask yourself, is this person a fit role model for me? Do I really want to be like this? Where do I see myself long term? Mm. You know, um, being in the music industry, it's because I love. Some people do it maybe because they want to make quick money overnight. But mm. that's not the situation. Some of us are nurses. We are doctors. You are doing good at your job. It's your passion. Yes. There's a place and time for everything in life. You just got to find what is fit for you. Wow. and what works for you and mm. go from it from there it doesn't necessarily have to be music you just gotta follow your heart follow the one thing that makes you want to wake up in the morning and go to work mm. you know be inspired love love to the full and i think if we all can find purpose to what makes you want to get up in the morning we'll have less moody people around <laughs> mm. yeah I, there, there's, there's a quote that says if you love what you do you would never have to work another day in your life and I think it's so true. We need to really discover that purpose and that passion that lies within us. And I think you've done that brilliantly, uh, Taryn. And, and, and it's such an inspiration to have you here and to sit and, and we can actually see that passion come out when you talk. It's in your eyes. It's in the way you sound like. And, and that's just amazing. That's just amazing. There are listeners out there that would like to touch base with you and perhaps uh, get to listen to your music or just to follow you on your social media platforms, can you perhaps give us some direction as to where they would find your music? Sure. You guys can definitely go ahead and follow me on Facebook um, at Darren Carolus Official. And the same applies for my Instagram handle, Darren Carolus Official. So feel free to definitely go ahead and follow me. And also, you can also download some of my music on all digital platforms. So. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So that's uh, YouTube. Um, perhaps what you can do is if there's a link, perhaps we can share that link to some of your music and then our listeners can hear some of your music. But once more, Taryn Carolus, thank you so much for the amazing time that you spent here with us. I'm sure there's somebody out there that has found some inspiration, as I have sitting here. I'm inspired. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for taking out the time and we hope to have you back in studio with us soon. That's it from our side. Definitely. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much for everybody who's tuned in and listening to the station. <laughs> so. That's